In this lesson, let's prepare our Exchange Server uh, for the installation of Exchange Server 2013. Now, I have gone ahead and deployed another virtual machine uh, in my test lab. I called it uh, the Bootcamp Exchange Server. And I'll just show you a couple of the settings that I uh, configured for this virtual machine. To begin with, I gave uh, this virtual machine uh, four gigabytes of memory. I do recommend that you give your Exchange server at least four gigabytes of memory. Um, if you give it any less than that, uh, in my experience, it will run very poorly and you, you may even have trouble getting Exchange to install in the first place. So at least four gigabytes and if you can give it some more, um, then it, of course it will run even better. I'm using a differencing disk for the uh, the system drive and in addition to that I've added some hard drives to the uh, virtual SCSI controller so I've just added uh, a 20 gig uh, disk for exchange data another 20 gig disk for uh, exchange logs and then a 100 gig disk for exchange backups and I've already gone ahead and formatted those drives and mounted them as you can see there. Now I've used dynamically expanding disks when I created those in Hyper-V so that they uh, don't take up that full 20 gig or 100 gig right from the start just to save on space. Now as well as that I've gone ahead and downloaded the latest build of Exchange 2013 which is Cumulative Update 3 or CU3. Now if you're running through these videos and there has been another release of Exchange Server 2013, so for example Service Pack 1 uh, has been announced for early 2014 which is a couple of months from now, then you should go ahead and use the latest one. Um, but I'm using CU3 because that's the latest build at this time. I've also downloaded the Office Filter Pack and the Service Pack 1 for that filter pack and the UCMA runtime as well. Now, to find those components, just do a search for Exchange 2013 uh, prerequisites. And just jump onto uh, that TechNet article. And we're installing a Windows Server 2012. And for this test lab, because we've only got one server, we'll be doing a combined mailbox and client access server. So I just expand this one here to see the prerequisites. Okay, and you see the download links for that Unified Comms Managed API, uh, the Office 2010 filter pack, and uh, Service Pack 1 for the filter pack. But before I can install those, I need to follow these instructions here. So open Windows PowerShell and run the following command. So I'll just grab this command to my clipboard. Let's make sure I got the whole thing there. And open Windows PowerShell. Paste that in there and away it goes. All right, that uh, PowerShell command has finished running and there is a warning um, that pops up here that says you must restart this server to finish the installation process and I'm also being warned that uh, automatic updating is not enabled on my server which is something I must have missed a little bit early on so we'll just make sure that's turned on as well okay so you will need to restart the server before you proceed to installing those three other components so I should do that now. I'll just run restart computer. And after that restart, just log back in again. Uh, so we can continue with the other components. So the order was uh, office filter pack. and then Office Filter Pack, uh, Service Pack 1. These are listed as prerequisites on TechNet, but they aren't mandatory. Um, you'll get a warning during Exchange setup if you don't have them there, but Exchange will continue to install um, 
if you want to avoid that warning, I just recommend installing them. It's not a big deal. And we'll just put the unified comms API on there as well. So now I just need to extract my Exchange 2013 setup files. And I will put them in a subfolder. Uh, of Exchange 2013 CE3. All right, jump into that folder, and all the way down the bottom, we find uh, our setup application. So let's just launch that. You get this option to uh, check for updates uh, on the internet, so if there's any um, uh, updates for Exchange Setup. Uh, I'm going to skip that now because I know that CE3 is the latest build right now. And now let's step through the Setup Wizard. Need to accept the license agreement, of course. Um, you can choose whether to participate in this program here um, where you provide usage feedback to Microsoft and things like that. Um, for my lab servers I leave that turned on because uh, I don't really have any concerns there. We're going to install both the mailbox role and the client access role on this server. And I'll be installing to the C drive. As there's no existing exchange organization in the AD forest, um, we get the opportunity to name the organization here. Uh, I will call mine Exchange Bootcamp, uh, but you can give this any name you like, or you could just leave it as First Organization if you prefer. There's no big deal there. Just be aware that you can't change that organization name later on. The Exchange 2013 uh, built-in anti-malware protection. Um, you get an option here to disable that. Uh, I'm not going to disable that at this time. You can disable it later on if you find that it's causing you some kind of problem. And now we just let setup run through the readiness checks for installation. All right, that readiness check has completed and there's two warnings here which aren't going to stop us from proceeding. They're just warnings to let us know that the, uh, the organization is going to be prepared for Exchange 2013 using these, uh, this setup slash prepare AD command which will be run automatically for us. And it just means that no Exchange 2007 servers or 2010 servers can be installed into this organization uh, after that process has completed. So you won't be able to install any older servers, uh, previous versions of Exchange into this organization if you uh, deploy Exchange 2013 now. Uh, if you did want to try out some coexistent stuff for 2007 or 2010 with Exchange 2013, you would need to first uh, deploy those versions, so the lower version first, and then deploy Exchange 2013 afterwards so that you can actually do a coexistence. Uh, but I'm not covering that in this series of lessons. We'll just go straight to Exchange 2013. So those warnings can be uh, basically ignored. And we can click Install. And Setup will begin. Now, as you can see here, there is a 15-step process. Uh, involved in installing this Exchange 2013 server, including the organization preparation steps. Um, some of those steps are actually quite lengthy. Um, this installation could take anywhere from 15 to 45 minutes, maybe even an hour, depending on the, um, the speed of your server, the resources that you've allocated to the server. So you can, you know, just leave it running, um, go and do something else if you need to and come back when it's all finished. Uh, but it's not unusual at all for that to take quite a bit of time, so just be patient. And now setup has completed. And uh, reading the message here, we need to complete the installation by rebooting the server. So after the server has been rebooted from uh, completing
completing setup, we just log back in and have a look at the results that we've got. So here on the server's start screen, we've got a couple of new items, the Exchange Toolbox and Exchange Management Shell. There's not much in the Exchange Toolbox, it uh, just contains um, a couple of links to external tools such as the Remote Connectivity Analyzer, as well as the old style um, Mail Queue Viewer. The Exchange Management Shell would be familiar to really anyone who's uh, used Exchange 2007 or 2010 before. Uh, so it's just a PowerShell window that uh, loads up um, some particular profile settings, loads the Exchange management snap-ins, and uh, just takes a few moments to load as you can see there. And of course you can just run any of those exchange uh, PowerShell commandlets that you might already be familiar with. We'll spend some time looking at um, different PowerShell commandlets uh, as we go through some of the other lessons. Now we also have the Exchange Admin Center which is accessed through uh, your web browser. It is a web-based administration console and you can get to that at HTTPS and then the fully qualified domain name of the server. In my case that's uh, ebcex1.exchangebootcamp.com and then a forward slash ECP which is for Exchange Control Panel even though we are connecting to the Exchange Admin Center. Okay you can see the Exchange Admin Center banner there and we can just log in now with uh, our domain credentials It may take uh, a few moments to load up the admin page the first time you log in. And if it is the first time you've logged in, you'll just need to choose your time zone as well. And there you have it. There's the Exchange Admin Center, the web-based administration console for Exchange 2013. So we'll be spending uh, a lot of time here in the Exchange Admin Center uh, as we roll through uh, other lessons, configuring Exchange and looking at some of the features. Also be spending some time in the Exchange Management Shell as well.